Ladies and gentlemen, I will go through diagnosis of lower urinary tract symptoms in urological patients. There are no disclosures. The patient with underlying neurological disease will present with symptoms of the storage phase, symptoms of the voiding phase, or a combination of symptoms of the storage and voiding phase. The diagnostic workup in the neurological patient is in principle not very different from the non-neurological patient. The cornerstone is the medical history, the present history, what is the problem, what is the patient complaining about, specific urinary history, but don't forget the sexual and also the bowel history. Then ask for the neurological history. Is there an underlying neurological disease that it is known? that has been known in the past, but also the gynecological history is important. The past history regarding surgical interventions, regarding other disorders, and ask the patient about the drugs. Is it a neurological patient with memory problems, cholesterolase inhibitors, Parkinson's disease, apomorphin levodopa, diabetes mellitus, may induce leaky blood pain barrier, psychiatric disorders, antidepressants, antipsychotics, may cause urinary retention, and also pain disorders, especially opiates, the analgetics, they may be an issue regarding voiding dysfunction. And obviously, many other drugs and many other drug, drug interventions. Whenever possible, please use validated disease and urinary specific instruments, questionnaires to assess your patients. There's a nice overview published very recently by Clark and Welk. This is just the short list. It's a long list in this publication about the instruments that you can use and that are validated in specific neurological diseases. The physical and mental handicap of your patient. Is a patient in the wheelchair? Is the patient really able, for instance, to do intermittent catheterization? Is it a mental handicap? Does he understand which medication he needs to take? Is there really an adherence to treatment? The bladder diary, a very important tool, but unfortunately rarely used. It really reflects the daily life of your patient. The bladder diary, it is so cheap, you can send it in advance of the consultation at home. Your patient can bring it into your outpatient clinic and you have immediately an overview what the patient is suffering from. Is it nocturnal polyuria? It is polydipsy. There are many, many different issues that you will not find out just looking and hearing what the patient is telling you. But with a bladder diary, it is so simple, just use it. The physical examination, it includes the abdomen, the flanks, the external genital organs, sensation and reflexes in the urogenital area, the anal sphincter and pelvic floor, but please don't forget the prostate. Here, an overview about the dermatomes here, and on the other side, the cutaneous nerves. In neurourology, especially important is S2, S3, S4, and S5. 
From another perspective, just have a look here, the innovation of S3, then the S4, and perianally the S5. And also here, the testicle area, S4, but the penile area is S3. The reflexes involved, the cremasteric reflex L1 to L2, then the bulbocarbonosus reflex S2 to S4, and the anal reflex S2 to S5. This is nicely reviewed in this Lancet Neurology article that you will easily find in PubMed. Examining your patient, please exclude that the patient is suffering from a urinary tract infection. Urinalysis and urine culture, if appropriate. But also uroflometry and post-void residual measurement. It is also an easy task to do, measure whether there is some post-void residual or not, preferably non-invasively using the ultrasound machine, but if it is not available, you can use just the catheter to measure whether there is some post residual or not. You even can use the catheter urine for urine culture. Renal morphology and function, the ultrasound, is the kidney dilated? Is there a small kidney? Is there a very big kidney? Is there an autotopic or heterotopic kidney? Creatinine. The creatinine has of limited value in patients with reduced muscle mass as patients with spinal cord injury, but also as patient, patients with spina bifida. It is preferably used to creatinine clearance. Cystatin C, it is not yet used so often and its value needs still to be determined. Compute tomography to exclude, for instance, urinary stones. Magnetic resonance imaging may be some promising avenue for the future, considering bold MRI, considering diffusion-weighted MRI, and the gold standard to assess renal function, the nuclear renal scan, MAC3 or DTPA. However, be aware, not every patient with an underlying neurological disease has only the neurological disease. The symptoms may be caused just here by a urethral stricture. You may consider urethrography, but you may also consider urethral cystoscopy, as you will not only detect the urethral stricture here, you may also detect a bladder tumor, bladder stones. And finally, Urodynamics. Urodynamics to assess what is the dysfunctional pattern of the underlying neurological problem. Here, the classical picture of the truce of sphincter dyssynergia. Ideally, the urodynamic investigation is combined with an X ray, ideally combined as video urodynamics. Here, a patient that will putting at risk the upper urinary tract with the reflux due to the trusus sphincter dysinergia, the pseudodiverticulum and diverticulum and the trabeculation. In this way, you will only see the tip of the iceberg. There are many other patients with an underlying neurological disease suffering from neuro-urological problems. But create awareness, create awareness within your patient, within the doctors, the referrals from gynecologists, urologists, rehab doctors, and the GPs. In conclusion, to sum up the diagnosis of your patients, there are bedside evaluation, History taking is essential, physical examination, and please use
Bladder Diaries. Whenever possible, questionnaires, but also non-invasive tests are important, exclude urinary tract infections, postvoid residual measurement, sonography, urophlometry, blood chemistry, if not already available, and urinary culture, urine cytology. Then the invasive tests, video urodynamics, urethrocystoscopy, pelvic neurophysiology, and renal scan. At the end, ask the level of the lesion. Is it a suprapontine lesion? Is it a spinal lesion? Or is it a sacral and infrasacral lesion? Each of these lesions, the patient will present some specific history. You will find with the ultrasound, the postvoid residual, and some specific urodynamic pattern. Thank you.